When you look at the cover of this video game, you might not really associate it with Halloween necessarily. You may associate it with some pretty uncouth language, I can only imagine what that guy is um, saying there, but overall, you really don't think Halloween when you look at this title here, but I can assure you, this game for the Super Nintendo is filled with a lot of really twisted and demented sort of imagery, and it's really the perfect introduction for Beagle Rampant's 2017 Halloween series. I'm Jordan Rolfus, and I'm going to take you down a journey in a seemingly normal American city, but this city has a lot of dark and messed up imagery to it. <laughs> Rocky Rodent was released in 1993 by a company known as IREM, which stands for International Recreational Electronics Machines. It's kind of a mouthful, I know, but they were established in the 1970s to produce a lot of arcade equipment, such as pinball machines and other things that were in arcades in the 70s, photo booths probably. Um, yeah, you didn't have as much choice as you do today with um, arcade stuff back in the 1970s, but they were also really famous, comparatively famous, for releasing the video game Vigilante for the Turbo Graphics. That's the one where the skinheads kidnap Madonna and you have to go and rescue her. And I'll let your imagination make that game more interesting than it actually is. But IREM was actually doing pretty well throughout uh, much of the 1990s, and in the 2000s they started to develop a lot of PlayStation exclusives under the publisher of Atlas. The company was affected by the 2011 earthquake that shook Japan and the resulting tsunami, which ultimately led to the Fukushima chemical disaster. And after that point, the company started to downsize a little bit, but they are still out there producing things and doing a lot of really good stuff nowadays. So, Irem, not the most exciting of company stories that I've ever talked about on this channel, but definitely some interesting anecdotes there. So, we're going to go ahead and actually review the game a little bit before I jump into a lot of this game's uh, dark and messed up imagery here. Overall, the game Rocky Rodent for the Super Nintendo, released in 1993, is really, really good. It features a lot of really amazing Mario-esque... Mario-esque, huh? Look at me tossing out these new words here. I, I sound like I could be like an art or a film critic or something. It's a very Mario-esque flavor to the platforming. And it is a very Mario-esque flavor to the platforming. It feels really right. It's definitely not a clone. It sort of it borrows from and is inspired by a lot of the great games that were coming around during the same time frame. There's also a heavy element on moving through the stages really quickly, as you would see in a lot of the Sonic games. So we have a lot of Mario elements, a lot of Sonic elements coming together really beautifully in this game, as opposed to that really messed up thing for the Sega CD piracy screen. Yeah, that was not a beautiful blend of Mario and Sonic. But this is, this is a really good and solid mixture for really quick platforming fun, and there's a lot, good variety of power-ups you can get. And each of the power-ups allow you to do different things throughout the levels, and the graphics are absolutely on par with where they should have been for the time, and the music, well, you know, it's not... Wagner or Meyer beer. It does the job for what we need it to. It certainly isn't unpleasant. It has a bit of a beat and you might, I don't know if you would really want to dance to this game. It, it doesn't invite you to go dancing necessarily, but overall it's a very pleasant experience and I really enjoy this game. It's good. It's really, really good. And that being said though, the game does maybe feel a little bit cheap sometimes. 
I notice a lot of times uh, you need a certain power-up to... The power-ups are the hairdos. You use different hairstyles to use as a weapon or as a way to do additional platforming to get to secret areas within the game. And I notice that the game almost sets you up so that you have no choice but to get the wrong hairdo to get to a bonus area. And that's not really cool, and a lot of times you really can't see an enemy or a hazard until it's way too late, and you have a limited amount of continues, but at the start screen, as you press start and Rocky Rodent runs across the screen with his battle cry, Yee-haw! So go ahead and enter the code YARABA on your SNES controller, and that will give you the chance to use Unlimited Continues. And you are definitely going to need every single one of those Unlimited Continues. So, now that I've told you that this game is pretty good, and now that I've kind of teased you with some dark and messed up imagery here, let's go ahead and actually look at the entire game and see just how really wanked this game can get. When we first start out the game, we see a little cutscene with a guy literally chasing Rocky Rodent with a meat cleaver. Yes, the first thing you see is a meat cleaver in this game. And he's upset with Rocky Rodent, yelling, I won't let you get away this time. This all is happening in front of a pretty bored-looking accountant guy, but it actually turns out this accountant-looking guy is the owner of the Rose Restaurant, and he's really upset because his only daughter, Melody, has been kidnapped by the Mafia boss, Don Garcia. And uh, the guy with the meat cleaver wonders, oh, you uh, didn't pay your bill, did you? So I guess Mafia stuff is pretty normal in this messed up town and they ultimately decide to send Rocky Rodin out to go get his daughter back because that would be the first thing I would do, the random rodent who is famous for being a dining dasher. He is known to just get out of paying his bill, he eats like a garbage disposal and then runs out of the restaurant and doesn't pay his bill and uh, the owner of the Rose restaurant says, hey, if you can bring my daughter back alive and unharmed, we'll go ahead and get you uh, an all-you-can-eat buffet. The first thing that you really come into in the first level is this old man looking kid? I don't know if he's a kid, he has the face of an old man, but he's on a skateboard like how kids do or did back in the 90s. It, it's pretty weird. And he says that Don Garcia is a tough guy and you need the magic of the hairspray to save your life. And this red hairspray that's in the trash can, because nothing beats trash hair, you know? The red hairspray that's within this trash can is fairly basic. You can stick enemies to the top of it, and actually you can do that with pretty much all of the hairstyles in the game, except for the braid one, but we'll get to the braid one in a little bit here. And it's fairly basic. You can cling to stuff and uh, attach things to your hair, and it's basic, and it works. It gives you an extra hit, so that's good. First level is pretty simple, straight up uh, self-explanatory. If you have trouble with it, uh, then this game is definitely going to be a very unpleasant experience for you. When we look at this city, it's definitely one of those cities that... Yeah, it's western, but it has sort of a New Yorkish sort of feel to it, but we can also very clearly see a Eiffel Tower and a Big Ben there, so... I don't know, but I guess we're in uh, New Para London City. I don't know, but it's Western, you know, it's all Western. It feels American to me, but I don't know. Whatever. Insert your city here, I guess. Once we beat the first level, we see the cutscene for the second level, where Melody is being shoved into a van by a cute little mouse looking guy and a very sweet looking old man who I honestly kind of want to be my grandfather. He just has that wonderful, charming, grandfatherly demeanor to him. I mean, you can't sell me that this guy is working for the Mafia here. Come on. I mean, I, I want to tell this guy what I want for Christmas and ask him for money to, you know, make Beagle Rampa Productions a household name or whatever. And, you know, people in heck want ice water, I guess, but... 
Yeah, it's hard for me to believe that these guys are actually involved with the Mafia somehow. And I gotta say, the freeway level is really, really fun. This combines a lot of the Sonic elements that I had mentioned. You have to go really, really fast and chase the car that they kidnap Melanie in. Melody, Melody not Melanie. You know, yeah, I was really f good friends with um, someone named Melanie when I played this game as a kid, and I always sort of like, I don't know, I wasn't too bright as a kid, and you can make the argument I'm not too bright now, but be that as it may, the Sunset Freeway level in Rocky Rodent is really fun. You have to go really, really fast and do a lot of really cool platforming jumps from the back of cars. It just feels right, but I gotta say, it was hard for me as a kid, and it still is maybe a little hard for me now. I kind of die a lot on this level, and... I have to say, the death scenes are where we see some more dark imagery. When you look at Rocky Rodent when he dies, he is dead. Like, it really got to me as a kid. Like, you know how in some other games, the hero, like, falls down a cliff and it's so, like, fakey and obvious? Or even in the, nowadays, the really more, like, violent and intense games, nobody actually dies like how it's being depicted in a lot of these ultra-realistic video games. But this, like, him just lying there, I mean, he's dead, you know? He is straight up dead. I mean, we're, all we need to do is just put him in a tuxedo, put him in a little coffin, and call the funeral home, have people write their sympathies in a book and send flower arrangements, and we've pretty much complained the whole uh, picture here complained the whole picture, I literally just said that, painted the whole picture of Rocky Rodent being dead. It's really messed up, and when you get a game over, you see his little angel going up to heaven. Like, this is pretty messed up here. This really got to me as a kid, and right around this time when I had this game, it was right around when I was having my first experiences with death, and so I couldn't not envision Rocky Rodent at a nice little funeral parlor with an undertaker shaking hands and saying, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Well, would you have the owner of the Rose restaurant there? I'm so sorry for your loss, sir. It, it's demented. It really got to me as a kid, and it still gets to me uh, nowadays. It's really messed up, and it's really dark. It's that kind of darkness. It's real, man, you know? Anyway, that rant aside, the freeway level is really fun, and it has a lot of dangerous things, uh, things that I really could not believe are street legal. And then once you actually get to the final boss, the old mafia guy actually is sporting a machine gun and hand grenades. Huh. So I guess I have to rescind all those, uh, grandfatherly sentiments, and I guess I should no longer ask him to get my birthday money early. Yeah, I guess that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, Grandpa's packing heat here. Once you defeat the boss of the second level, a taxi comes up uh, to you and says, we might find a clue in Melody's apartment as to where she is. I think they were heading over to her apartment. I don't know why kidnappers would take someone to where they live, but okay, you're the taxi driver, I guess, so we'll go ahead and follow you, and you hop on top of the taxi, and all of a sudden you hear a nice car crash sort of sound, and I think we can safely assume that the um, taxi driver died in the straight-up intense death scene that Rocky Rodent is famous for, but Rocky was on top, so he just, you know, hops off as the taxi driver goes to his untimely demise there. Ooh, yeah. This game uh, doesn't seem so dark on the surface, but when you stop and just give it a few moments of thought, it can really mess with you. The next level is the ghost apartment, and as you run through this broken down, crumbly apartment, ah yes, this is urban poverty and decay at its finest. Once you run through this apartment, you'll notice an old turntable, and the second you look at the turntable, it'll go ahead and start playing, and all of a sudden, instant ghost infestation, because that is a scientific fact on how old turntables work. You press play, and they go ahead and bring out a lot of ghosts. You don't even press play on turntables, you put the needle down. I have proven I am a 90s kid.
Anyway, once all the ghosts are here, you can continue running around through the level in straight up Sonic style, and it feels good. This is a fun level. The whole game's really, really fun. But one thing I've noticed is there's a secret room in this level where a young lady is taking a shower, and this lady looks like Melody, and it's... Okay, so Melody's taking a shower? She looks comfortable, I guess, so... Uh, we good here? Unless that's not Melody, but it looks like her and it sounds like her, but... I mean, if she's okay at her apartment, I... Shouldn't we be good to go now? But regardless, uh, once you leave uh, her little shower chamber, another gentleman comes up behind you and starts pressing on the door to prevent you from re-entering, so I guess Melody's shower is pretty much a community affair in these parts. Okay. After the filler level, we get a nice little intermezzo where the old man kid comes up to us and says, Hey, I heard about a really huge egg on top of the metro tower. You should go and check it out. So, we kind of forget about Melody there. Uh, she's fine. She's taking a shower. It should all be okay. And we run up the Metro Tower, which is yet another really fun level. And you get to fight nice construction workers who are literally just trying to do their job and get this little punk rodent kid away from them, but be that as it may, and it's filled with a lot of uh, hooks with that you use uh, the braid power for. You can do a lot of really impressive platforming and swinging jumps. It feels really right. In the Metro Tower level, there is a comparatively easy one-up to grab, and I gotta say, the one-ups in this game are really twisted looking. It's a hand clenching a beating heart. Again, the game on the surface really doesn't look that demented, but when you stop and think about it, it's a hand holding a beating human heart. It's messed up, I mean, and that's your one-up. So you take that. What is Rocky Rodin going to do with that? Like, oh, okay, there's the severed hand holding the heart. Cool. Like, is he eating it? Oh, I don't even want to fathom. Like, it's pretty messed up. Like... So much of this game, it seems fine on the surface, but then you stop and you think, and it's like, whoa, man, this is getting a little real. So eventually, Rocky gets to the top of Metro Tower, and he sees the Monster Egg, which supposedly can make omelets for over a hundred people, and of course, in good old-fashioned chivalrous fashion, he lets the egg drop, so obviously he needs to run down to go ahead and catch it before it splatters all over the place. And you gotta love how when Rocky runs down a downward slope, his eyeballs literally jump off of his skull. Like I said, this game is really demented when you look past the surface. If you stop and think about this game, it can really send some chills down your spine. Once you get to the next level, you pick up the egg, and the egg hatches with a nice little chicken girl named Pecky. And of course, in once again in chivalrous fashion, Rocky says, I'm not your daddy, I just wanted to eat you, because that's the humane thing to do. And Pecky is pretty useless throughout the game. She is supposed to go ahead and attack a lot of the smaller bad guys to help you out through the level, but by the time she actually gets to them, they've probably already killed you, so it really isn't worth having her around. The boss of the level after the Metro Tower is a bat, and once again, Pecky proves her valiance, and we will ultimately see the bat again, but after this bat battle... I'm Batman. You shouldn't be battling bats. Yeah, I couldn't resist there. Anyway, after the bat battle, um, we meet up with Old Man Kid again, and he says that Don Garcia has taken Melody to the Chili Factory because... reasons. It doesn't seem like a logical place to take your hostage, but what do I know? Anyway, the Chili Factory. It's more of a rodent-killing factory. There's all sorts of really nice torture devices that just seem like they're there specifically to kill Rocky Rodent. And of course, the boss of the Chili Factory, oh, he's riding an elephant. How sweet. Oh, he's going to be a nice, friendly guy. Of course, he promptly says that he would like to cook you in the chili sauce, so... Okay, 
Sweeney Todd's riding a nice little elephant here. Okay, well. We'll go ahead and take care of this guy, I guess. After the chili factory level, we end up in Garcia's sewage. And once again, old man kid, because he's been batting so well for us uh, this game, mentions that we should probably head out of the sewer before we're poisoned by the sewage. But when you take a close look at the sewage here, it looks like the chili that Rocky Rodent wanted to drink and what Don Garcia is probably selling in massive units to local restaurants throughout the city. In the sewer level, there's a mysterious subway that comes and kills you with one hit, and it happens really, really fast, but if you're able to stop and take a good look at the person driving it, it looks like it's the spirit of the undead driving this thing. The guy looks like a straight-up zombie. Literally, you can't see this guy and live. The level after the sewers is, uh, you know, kind of another filler level, I guess. But the Bat boss is back, and Rocky Rodent tauntingly says, Oh, Bat, you're a piece of cake, a sentiment that I'm not entirely sure that I agree with. And, again, you'll see a lot of footage of me not actually beating the bat, but you can be certain that I did go ahead and beat him. I lost a whole bunch of times because you can make the argument I'm not too good at this game, or really any video game at all, but I go ahead and I defeat this bat, and now we're getting into the final stage of the game, the clock tower, and this is a rough one. The cutscene before the clock tower is basically just Don Garcia leading Melody up the tower. Yeah, they can't all be gems, I guess. Once you beat the first level of the clock tower, you see another cutscene where Melody is pretty much just done with it. She just stopped caring. Don Garcia, go ahead and do whatever you want to me. I really couldn't care at this point now. You took me to a chili factory. You don't know what you're doing, man. And Don Garcia tells her to cheer up because Rocky Rodent is here to rescue her, not really the thing you would think a kidnapper would say to his hostage, but, oh well, <laughs> yeah. We're not dealing with, um, Professor Moriarty here. Yeah, we certainly aren't. The second level of the clock tower stage is really, really intense as well. There's this part where you have to wait for these cogs to come rolling down the steps, and honestly, this is where I needed that Yaraba cheat code, because, um, this geek part is really, really cheap, I think. You really can't predict where they're coming or how to defend against it. I tried for 45 minutes to figure out what the pattern was, and I never could. I just... I don't even know what on earth it was I did to get myself past this. I don't think I even was able to record it because it just sort of happened so spontaneously and, you know, I ain't gonna record, like, hours and hours of footage of me trying to do one thing in a video game. That's a little ridiculous, you know? But I got past it, and then right after that, we see the boss of the clock tower level, the Bull Bulldozer. The Bull Bulldozer? He's the Bad Bulldozer! What? <laughs> Wow. More of that beagle rampant professionalism that people have come to know. The Bad Bulldozer is the boss of the Clock Tower stage, and he is definitely a rough one to beat. Again, you'll need that Yoraba cheat code, because you'll need every one of those unlimited continues. Once you defeat the Bad Bulldozer, which I can assure you I actually did, I don't know how, and I don't have the footage to back up that claim, but once you beat the Bad Bulldozer, we see another cutscene of Melody being in the merciless grip of Don Garcia, and we think, okay, this is going to be the final boss, where Rocky Rodent takes care of Don Garcia and leads the city into a brand new renaissance of freedom, growth, and peace. Well, actually, Don Garcia just says, okay, here you go. You want to rule the city with me, Rocky? And Rocky's like, no, I can't trust you. Oh, okay. I'm busy. Bye. So, Melody is returned to Rocky Rodent, and Don Garcia just walks away. So, the problem clearly isn't resolved once and for all. 
Yeah, I wonder, were they ever planning on a sequel for this game? And none of the research I ever did confirmed that, but it's kind of begging for one. Oh my gosh, can we get an HD remastered one for the Wii U? <laughs> I'm just kidding, no one plays the Wii U anymore, but for the Switch or the Xbox? And like, could we maybe even have it like rated M and like really just go there, go to that dark place, man. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. But anyway, Melody is returned to her father, the owner of the Rose Restaurant, and he's glad to have her back and glad to see her. And of course, Rocky Rodent is only caring about his food and the all-you-can-eat buffet. And it's one of those situations, you know, where you have your friend who's calling and ordering lunch and they order pretty much everything on the menu. And then they look over at you and you're like, hey, you want anything? And that's kind of how Rocky is with Melody. Oh yeah, get something for Melody too. I'll be eating your whole restaurant, but uh, make sure you feed that pig Melody there. And of course, at that point, Melody decides, oh wow, Rocky Rodent, you're so handsome, because nothing says awesome video gaming like a good interspecies romance. And then she goes ahead and gives him a kiss and, oh my god, watch out for my eye! And uh, at that point, after the nice romantic kiss and the nice happy eye poking, we have the credits, and that's pretty much it. There's no further ending, and the ending is maybe a little bit of a disappointment, as is kind of the story itself. There's a lot of just logical plot holes and a lot of incongruencies, but overall, the game is really solid. It's really enjoyable. It feels really right to play. It has a lot of really wonderful elements that were critical for this sort of game at the time, and it's filled with a lot of really twisted and dark imagery. If you just look at the surface, you won't really pick up on it. But if you stop and think about it, even just for a couple of seconds, you'll see that this is a pretty messed up and intense sort of game here. So, yeah, that's Rocky Rodent for the Super Nintendo. A nice game that definitely really delivers. And if you're a collector, I would highly recommend to go ahead and seek this game out because it's pretty cheap now, but it's starting to rise in price a little bit. So if you were thinking about adding this to your collection, you may want to go ahead and do that sooner rather than later. So my question for you guys, let me know down in the comments section below if you guys have ever played this or if you guys have picked up on a lot of the dark and disturbing imagery. Huh. I get sweaty sometimes when I record. I guess maybe it's because of the stage fright. I want to put on a good show for you guys. Let me know down in the comments section below if I did put on a good show for you guys. I always try to do the best I can for my fans and subscribers. You guys are the best fans any YouTuber could ever hope to have, and I really appreciate all of your likes, your comments, your subscribing, and let's get a conversation down below about Rocky Ronin. I really enjoy this game. There's a lot to love about it. The story maybe isn't as solid as it could be, but, I mean, I weren't expecting Dante or anything like that, and it definitely gives you the scares, which I didn't honestly think it would back in the day, but, yeah, it, it, it sticks with you, you know? So, once again, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate likes, comments, subscribing, and all of that good stuff. You guys are the best fans any YouTuber could ever hope to ask for, and I'm really lucky and blessed to have you guys in my corner and supporting me. It really means a lot to me. I'm Jordan Rolfes, and I will catch you guys next time for some more Halloween fun stuff.